in this week's screencast we'll be talking about Django testing we're going to be using a few tools called PyTest as well as using Django fixtures to pre-populate some test data as well as getting our tests functional and concise as possible so to introduce our first tool we're going to be using PyTest this is a little application I've been using as of recently with most of my Django application it's, it's a little tool that allows you to get your code as concise as possible less code means less code that'll break which is awesome so what we have here is PyTest and PyTest allows you to write more concise more targeted code it removes a lot of the boilerplate when setting up testing code uh, it also allows us to have things called fixtures as well as which are different from Django fixtures it also let us have things called context which we can group and select we can also mark different tests so we can run different tests in different packages for example we can run all, all our unit tests by specifying which tests are considered unit tests and then you need to put all these marks inside your code so it knows which ones to run um, it's got a huge plugin interface it's it's really awesome people have extended it and to that effect we will be using a plugin called Django PyTest PyTest Django it's an extension of PyTest that allows you to set up a lot of the Django specific details and I have to deal with them every time you want to create something. So one of the few things that you deal with, it sets up the Django settings model, which is something we'll be overriding today in order to, to quicken up or speed up our tests. Um, the installation is quite straightforward. All we do is do that. You of course have to have PyTest. Um, next thing we have here also is lets us deal with creation and, and reuse of the database. So if we've already created a database with some test data loaded in, it'll reuse it from time to time if that's what you wish to have. It also provides us fixtures, which are which are application constants. So for example, if you were writing up a Django test example from scratch, you'd have to initialize a client so you could catch a view. What this does for you, it sets all that up and abstracts it away so you can write only what you need. Um, we'll be dealing with the client fixture in our example today, which will be quite nice when writing our tests. Um, I suggest you guys delve into both of these, but we'll be covering these both extensively today. So as you can see here, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background of what this project consists of. <coughs> We're going to be testing two views. We're going to be testing our about view and our home view today. Um, the about view is pretty straightforward. All we want to see that it returns the 200 and maybe assert on some of the data that's on this page. Maybe, maybe not, depending on how specific you want to get. Um, our home page has a bit of context. We'll be getting some of our our fi Django fixtures into this, which is specified here. This is just a <coughs> this is just a fixture which declares a user, it declares a player, it declares another user, a player. Um, it gets deep. It declares what a game consists of, its players, its sport, its owner. Um, there's a bunch of kind of stuff here. So this is what a fixture looks like. It's just uh, it's just a group of data. I'll put a link to the short notes on how to generate your own initial JSON data. Um, but in an upcoming talk, I'll show you how to get rid of all of this. As you can see, this is very um, terse and inflexible when trying to do things moving forward. So what the trick is, is to keep them as concise as possible and targeted as to what needed. So for example, if you're testing stuff that deal with games, only load the games fixtures and et cetera, et cetera. But today we'll be only dealing with this particular set of data. So we won't need to worry about that. So let's go into our models. Our models are very simple. We have a concept of a game in uh, courtside. Uh, it consists of many players, it consists of the person organizing the game, which sport, when it started, the location in, in as a decimal field, an address, the minimum number of players for the game to actually happen, and whether the game is active or not. And that says, is the game happening or not, or, or should it be shown on the map? Um, or is it just a draft game that you have settled up? We also have the concept of a sport, which is simply the name of the sport. We have a player, and this could be the user's name, so how they, their, their account information, username, password, all that stuff. We have a gender on top of that, the sports they're interested in, and there's multiple ways to authenticate, which are Twitter and Facebook. And those are the respective keys and a place to get their image on the site. So now that I've introduced these games, we're going to quickly write a test that shows us how many games are currently available when you load the home page. But before we do that, we need to quickly take a look at creating a 
INI file which PyTest will use. So I've quickly written an INI file here for our project. We have our Django settings module which specifies the settings that will will run during test as well as Python files that PyTest should look for. Now by default PyTest is set to anything that begins with test in its name with any particular ending. I have changed that to anything that begins with test underscore which will only look at files that begin with that type. It's useful if you want to section out which tests get run so you can make it so that on default it only looks for certain specific tests but generally you want to have some type of naming convention for your tests and you set that here. Uh, another thing we'll need to do is look at our conf test. What this does is simply adds our current path where we're running where this file exists into the Python path. This allows us to specify the testing module like so. If this, this doesn't exist, it won't uh, find the settings file and then therefore not run our tests. All this does is it goes this file's current location added to our syspath, which adds the entire project to the path, which then allows us to resolve courtside.test underscore settings. Another thing we might want to look at since we're here, we're going to look at that test settings file. All that simply does is import settings, which is currently in this directory, which you can see here is a simple Python test file, settings file rather, sorry. And it just installs, shows us which apps are installed and other various that you should, if you've done a Django project, this should be very straightforward. Um, by default, we're using a Postgres database when we're doing our local development. Um, what our test setting does is is allows us to use uh, in-memory database, which of the type of SQLite. And that's the only thing we do here. This is only done in terms of speed. So our tests, our functions are loaded quickly and allows us to get quick test response when dealing with database interactions. So that being said, we're going to go ahead and save this. Um, and we're ready to write our first test. So once we start running our test, we're going to import PyTest. We are then first going to specify saying that this particular test group or class uses the database. So we need the database in order to test this particular thing. We are testing a view in this case, so we will most likely end up using the database. So we're going to call this test games. And we're going to start defining our view. So let's write our first one. So we're going to test the about view. Um, it takes us the self of the class and it takes a client, which is a fixture from PyTest, which gives us a Django client, which we can then open up pages against. So we're going to look for response object. We're going to go client dot get. And we're going to go slash about is what we want. Once we have that, we have a response that we're supposed to be asserting against. We want to assert that this page actually loaded. So we're going to go assert response dot status code is equal to 200. So that is a simple test. We're simply going to say that this page successfully loaded. Let's quickly run this test here and we will see that the test fails. That is interesting. So as you can see here, it's saying we're getting a 301 versus a 200. So let's quickly just take a look at our URLs file and see what's going on. Um, our URL point endpoint is about forward slash, which is different from what we have in our test here. Um, our test here is looking for an about forward slash. We can easily avoid that. We, all we simply can do is go follow is equal to true. It'll follow the response redirect, and this should end up giving us the response we're looking for. Um, let's just add a print statement here. We're going to go print response.content, which should give us the content of the page, the end result of this particular page's content. Um, let's quickly run that test. Um, in order to get the printing print statements and stuff to show up, we have to pass a dash s statement to our PyTest, which I will do here so we can see the page. Our test runs, and as you can see above, we have our context here. So we can also not have to have this follow, but sometimes you may need to, but in this case, we can simply fix it by providing the ending slash, run our tests again, we can remove the print statements, it's no longer needed, and our one singular test runs. Great. 
Um, the next thing we want to test now is our home view. So we're going to go dust home view. This test has a bit more meat to it and not much, but a bit more. We want to assert that um, the basketball game is showing up in our view, in the context of our view. So we want to go, so in the home page of, of Quartzside, if I can get that running real fast here, just give me a second. We're going to go Python manage.py run server. Hopefully that's no issue. Awesome. We will then go to Not running Postgres. Just give me a second here. So as you can see, our home page has a bunch of pinpoints that we put. These are shoved into the context of the page. Currently, there is nothing. But in our test fixtures, as I pointed out earlier, there is one particular active game that is a basketball game. So what we want to do is assert that this is pa getting passed up to the view in our code here. So what we need to do here is go back to our code. We're going to write the code that says, hey, load this page. So we're going to go response is equal to client.get slash. We are then going to go make an assertion on that response. So we're going to assert len of the response context. And we're looking for our basketball context. So if you go back to our view here, you'll see that you'll see that basketball gets shoved into context with the key basketball. So this is what our context, our index.html renders against. So there is a there is a key of basketball inside our context. So we'll come back here to our game test. We want to look up basketball. We know in our test fixtures that we have one active game of basketball. So we want to assert that there is one of those things here and run our test. So we're going to run these both here now. We're going to go pi test, pi dot test, run the tests. And as you can see, awesome. We have two tests, both pass. Great. Um, plugins that we're using here, it's simply just the plugins. We're using the Django plugin. We're using the Sugar plugin, which gives us this little interface of what tests ran and what didn't. Um, and what operating system and what version of Python. And there you have it. You then go and iterate your tests from there. Um, in next week's screencast, I'll be introducing Factory Boy, which allows you to create more complex structures for your data. Um, in this case, um, our data set wasn't that complex what we're trying to test, so the fixtures were enough. But in many cases, the fixtures aren't, aren't uh, enough.